Bonjour, Micheline Bourque, ici au PMI euh, Montréal, euh, édition 2016. Je suis en présence d'un des conférenciers ici euh, au symposium, Monsieur Robert Paris, Robert Paris. Oui, oui, oui. C'est un nom très pratique. En Québec, oh, c'est vrai. Québec. There you go. Excellent. So, Monsieur Paris il parle très bien français, mais on a décidé de, de faire l'entrevue en anglais euh, pour les fins de la cause. Son, donc, la première chose qu'on va faire, c'est présenter M. Paris. Mr. Robert Paris, who are you and what do you do? I don't know. I've been asking myself my entire that life that, right? but uh, how to do that in a minute or two, uh, whatever. I actually have um, a company. It's called Myelin Leadership. Okay. I've uh, been around for over 20 years. Is that right? And I've had a, a, the amazing opportunity on five continents uh, across the world to be able to work with some of the best leaders in the wow. world from an organizational perspective. Wow. So we did, our, probably our claim to fame, we did the original leadership development program for the Cirque du Soleil on five continents. So we do um, leadership development and executive coaching and uh, a lot of work in the area of innovation. Wow, what yeah. an interesting life you've had. Yeah, I, I think so. Wow. <laughs> and I actually make money doing it. Oh, which is that's like terrific. Really You're uh, yeah. an inspiration. I'm very happy uh, that you've had that success and that you've been able to have all of those beautiful experiences. Um, I, I also ask all of the people that I'm interviewing, are you a book reader, a book reader yourself? I'm an intense uh, reader. And, and what I talk about is neural leadership, mm -hmm. the, the brain and uh, how it applies to leading others. And I got started around five, six years ago. Is that right? And, and what happened was that I got really interested in the topic. So I was like most Quebecers during winter, escaping the snowbirds uh, down south. Okay. And when everybody else was on the beach reading murder mysteries and romance, um, I had six books based on the brain. Wow. And my wife thought I was crazy. <laughs> But People I, I, don't understand us. They don't they understand don't. we love these books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, no, we do. And I, I so I read intensely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Always have? Always. Okay. I've always been. It's just been, uh, just been part of me. It's part of, to me, to, uh, to read is to learn mm -hmm. and to enrich y yourself and to grow. So, uh, yeah, I, oh, I really love it. It's like music to my ears. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I asked you to pick a couple of books for us uh, so that you could introduce these books. Uh, you took two. and uh, I did not know either one. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy to introduce these books. Obviously, they will be about the brain mm -hmm. at some level. Mm -hmm. And uh, which one do you want to start uh, first? The Whole Brain Business Book. Okay, let's okay, show so it. Let's uh, kind of hold it up uh, over here. Is that the Whole Brain Business Book by Ned Herman and Anne Herman Neddy. Unlocking the power of whole brain thinking in organizations, teams, and individuals. This is a very thick book. <laughs> Tell it us is. about it. What What is this book about? Well, it, it, it really is a very powerful book. In fact, I was just uh, speaking at the conference. I did a workshop on whole brain thinking. Okay. The reality is, when you think about it, everything that we do is based on the brain. Right. Our interaction right now, how we're interacting, with, how I'm giving the message is based on my brain, my life experiences, and how I prefer to think. Right. How you're receiving the message is based on your brain, and how your brain is wired, and how you prefer to, to, to think. So our brain is the source of everything. It's how we behave, it's how we act, it's, uh, it really is everything. So the whole brain business book really gives us insights into how our brain actually works, um, how we prefer to think, what we might avoid uh, to think, and thus how can, when we say whole brain thinking, how can we recognize the avoidances in our thinking and become more, increase our ability to think in greater breadth? So that when we're communicating with others, um, we're using more of our brain and a much wider perspective to communicate. When we're um, creating a strategic plan, we're not avoiding certain areas based on how we think. When we're giving feedback to someone in a performance re re review, we have to understand it's not just based on how we think, but how does the other, let's say the employee, think mm -hmm. as well. Because if we're communicating in, in a style that's based on my thinking style and not on the other person's thinking style, it's likely to go way over their head. Mm -hmm. So what I love about the Whole Brain Business Book is that it really gives us insight into the brain, how we think, what we avoid to think, and how does that apply within our organizations in a wide variety of areas, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for example, communications and uh, strategic planning, innovation, creativity, um, a wide variety, and it gives very practical results. The authors, uh, are they related or? or, or 
Or is this a coincidence? No, or? no, it's uh, it's not. Actually, Ned Herman, who is, is not alive uh, um, uh, anymore, okay. and Ned Herman founded the Hermit Institute, okay. which is a pioneer in brain r r research. That's where I was going. So these are uh, people who know what they're talking about. They, oh, yes. They were some of the pioneers in, in developing this field of, of neuroscience? Yeah, yes, okay. yeah. Ned, Ned was one of the um, original pioneers and he found out about the brain, okay. but what he was able to do and what he, what he wrote in the book was, how do we apply that in our organizations? Right. Because it's one thing to give theory, it's another thing to say, okay, now that you understand how you think, how do you ap apply that in managing and leading others? And th this is a, a thick book. Uh, is it a book that is readable by the the common folk. Do, do we need to to have some uh, medical, uh, not not medical, but uh, scientific knowledge about anatomy? Do we need to know about psychology, psychiatry, uh, or other related sciences? Or can I read this and learn from it? Oh, it's entirely readable. It, it's meant for the um, layman, uh, okay. for sure. Okay. It gives it. It talks about the the brain. It gives us a base understanding of the brain, but it's done in a very light way. Okay. But the rest of it, it's all done in stories in in at organizations. So, for example, ninety seven percent of Fortune one hundred companies in the states use whole brain thinking as a concept. So it tells a lot of those stories. How, in a very practical way. Um, so, um, how how was whole brain thinking used to better engage employees? Okay. Or it, for example, IBM in the ni 1990s was losing billions of dollars, and one one of the ways they turned around was that they went from being big blue IBM blue, so left brain thinkers to whole brain thinkers, and that's widely credited at IBM for. Um, helping them turn around. Did they do this consciously? Is the the uh, the, the wording uh, "whole brain" something that that exists as a une appellation uh, for, for forever? Has it been around for twenty years, or yes. is it recent? No, it it, it was done in, in the nineteen nineties, and it changed their culture. Okay. Because instead of just thinking left brain thinking, which is based on analysis mm -hmm. and logic mm -hmm. and numbers, again, big blue and very intimidating, they were missing the people aspect and the innovation aspect. And that kind of thinking uh, takes place on the right side of the brain. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 again, they had the analysis and everything else, the planning and everything else, but they didn't have the rest of it right. Okay, but um, I'm thinking about the wording, whole brain. Yes. If I do hashtag whole brain on Twitter, is there gonna be thousands yes. of tweets? Yes. So it's a word that's out there, people know this. Who knows this wording? Who, who knows about the whole brain? Well, a, a, as I said, we brought a lot of this work into organizations, okay. so Fortune 100 companies, but there literally are thousands of companies okay. around the world okay. that have been trained in whole brain thinking. Okay. In my practice, I work with my clients, so all, all of my clients, it's second nature, okay. and they um, okay. use this to advance their causes. So a person who reads this is going to understand what the whole brain thinking uh, concept is all about, yes. and how to apply it in a business setting. Yes, okay. and, and that's why I really love that book, because okay. it, it's very readable, it's full of stories. You learn a little bit about your brain, but you learn a lot about how to well apply it, how you can improve as an individual, how your team can improve, and indeed your whole organization. Is it a practical book too, with exercises or tips, uh, that type of thing? Full of, of, of exercises, tips, uh, stories, and I think that's what ma makes it readable. Mm -hmm. It introduces what the theory is, what the concept is, but because the Hermit Institute has so much experience mm -hmm. within organizations, they then add in a very readable way the practical aspect mm -hmm. to match with it with the theory. Mm -hmm. Is this the type of book that you give to your clients when you start working with yes. them? Yes. Um, all, all the time. Well, uh, we, we do um, workshops, yeah. which now there, there's something called the Herm, Herman Brain Dominance Instrument. Now, brain dominance sounds very, <laughs> oh, what, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> but when, when you think about it, one of the things mentioned in the book that it's an anatomical fact. Okay. Most of us have uh, um, uh, a dominant hand, right. eye, ear. Right. The brain is no different. Okay. So, so what that does, it really explains that, that because we have dominance in our brain, that really influences how we think, okay. okay, and what we might avoid, okay. and that's really what the premise of, of of the book is. And how can you become, when we say, a better whole brain thinker? Mm -hmm. Use more of your brain to better communicate, manage, and lead. Very interesting. Uh, some of the 
recommendations here. Ken Blanchard, who's a very famous author. Daniel Pink, who's also mm -hmm. written many very interesting books, which we've done at the book club. David Rock, who's also a pioneer mm -hmm. in neuroscience. Uh, we also did a book with the book club, uh, Your Brain at Work. The others I don't know, but I'm suspect that they're very, uh, very knowledgeable. Shannon Loftus from Microsoft. Dr. Mark Shar from Stanford University. So thank you for this first recommendation. Okay. The other one sounds a little <coughs> bit uh, more uh, funky. The right <laughs> side, the right kind of crazy. Tell us about that one. I'll introduce it first. Okay. Uh, Adam Steltzner with William Patrick, The Right Kind of Crazy, a true story of teamwork, leadership, and high stakes innovation. How did this book pop into your life? Well, it, it really is an, an, an incredible look. And take this situation. Right. Imagine that you have a following task, right? Mm -hmm. You're given around 10 years to do it, but your task is to take a 2,000 ton uh, spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Within it has a rover called Curiosity, okay? You've got to take that. You've got to place it on a planet, Mars, 140 million miles away going through the atmosphere of Mars, so making sure things don't burn up or, or whatever, and it's rotating at the same time, to land on an exact spot in Mars at an exact place and time. Now, most of us probably can't do that, right? No, I cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I could do that either. So the right kind of crazy is basically saying, how did a group of NASA engineers in the US work over the better part of a decade to do exactly that, accomplish that amazing task. And it's just an incredible story of human ingenuity. Okay. And, uh, and exactly how Adam Stel Stelzner, who was the head of the team, how he uh, made it happen. Okay, yeah. how did you learn of this book? Well, I, 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 I subscribe to all kinds of, of different lists and whatever, and I go online and, and people and talk to me, all kinds of books. So like okay. I said, I love to read. Okay. So it was, it was something that uh, I think was recommended, it was on a book list or whatever, right. but I read a review, it seemed interesting, mm -hmm. and I uh, decided to read it, and I loved it. Okay. What, uh, what more can, we tell, can you tell us about this book? Uh, is it like the other book, is it uh, written for the common folk, or is, has it a particular public in mind? Or mm -hmm. It is writ written for the, the common folk, but I think a lot of it is written for managers. And it's very interesting because uh, pro pro project ma managers will tend to uh, focus in on, because a lot of engineers, and, and they talk about engineers who do a lot of coding who are brilliant that were involved in this project, okay. they're left brain thinkers. And they're, they're very good at math and at engineering and at analysis and, and all, all, all of the uh, left brain stuff. So you would think that these brilliant people who are so left brain, that the success was really ultimately credited to their ability to think analytically and mathematically. When that, that's not what this book is all about. And what Steltzner basically said, he led this team for 10 years. And what I loved about it, he said it really was all about the teamwork. Mm -hmm. And what he described was how did he take a lot of um, introverted, left brain thinkers, tap into what motivated them, what their love was, beyond the math and the analysis. How he was able to connect them to the higher purpose, okay, as well as to each other to build a team that felt safe that, and, and he said it really wasn't about uh, the people, it was about their I ideas. And he said this major accomplishment of landing uh, the, the rover Curiosity on Mars never would have happened if we didn't have a team environment, if people didn't feel free to question the, the, themselves, um, to freely question, not each other, but the idea. Okay. And it was all about building the idea. So I think there is vast um, uh, riches to learn here about how we can take a left brain thinking group mm -hmm. and mold them into a team to solve a very, very complex uh, mm -hmm. problem. Does he talk in those terms in the book? You're talking about you know, left brain, right brain. Does he talk about that or is it really m much more your interpretation that relates to how leadership uh, qualities are not necessarily left brain qualities but more of a another kind of quality. Well, he doesn't talk left brain or right brain, but he does talk in terms of engineering and okay. math. Like okay. so he says that our talk and he's an engineer himself. So okay. we speak engineering and uh, and and yeah, you know, we speak math. Yeah. 
but what his learning was when he reflected about the success mm -hmm. was actually some of the right brain stuff uh -huh. coming together as a team. So you really interpreted the book with your with, with your own deformation professionnelle. Yes. You, you see things in those terms, and reading a book like that sh like illustrates uh, some of the founding. Uh, 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 how should I say things that you truly believe in that yes. we can interpret the world, interpret the world in those terms. Yes, yes. So it's a petite déformation professionnelle. Oh, we oui, know exactly. <laughs> well, okay, I'm, I, 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 I'm guilty. You have to plead guilty. I'm guilty. guilty. Here. I, I, I <laughs> plead guilty of doing that. But it's not a book about neuroscience like no. the other one was, uh, and I mean, left brain and uh, right brain are not just neuroscience concept, but um, it, it is a book. Uh, that is about leadership and building teams, and this is really interesting in this environment at PMI here, where those qualities are a, a must if you're going to be able to bring uh, about and conclude on long-term projects. And ten years is a long term. Well, it is, and a, a very, very big premise of the book was that often when you're dealing with left-brain project managers and engineers or whatever, that they use the rational part of, of their brain to think um, um, rationally. But what's what's he what stuff was able to do go into their gut thinking their visceral thinking mm. because intuition and uh, instinct. intuition and instinct yeah. right so yes common sense is is one thing but it's quite another thing to he he really got them in touch with their that we call it the visceral um, aspect their gut instinct because mm -hmm. he said if we all didn't uh, plug into our gut instinct we never would have been successful in this project mm -hmm. so that's related to whole brain thinking the combination mm -hmm. of cerebral thinking with gut thinking mm -hmm. as well as left brain common sense thinking with more intuitive right brain thinking as well so yes that is my professional interpretation <laughs> but by the way but it's, it's a great book no no but it's an interesting way to go uh, about it and explain explain uh, with your view, with your way of, of looking at analyzing uh, a book, uh, is there anything else? It's a it's it's not a practical type of book. It's more of a reading uh, experience. It, mm -hmm. it leaves you to think about it as opposed to giving you uh, here do this and that. It's a much more of a thinking book. Well, it, it it is, but but he tells the story, and who isn't fascinated by NASA?